So this video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the mapping of the cortex organization within the motor cortex and the brainstem and spinal cord. The homunculus, which roughly translates to little person, is a representation of the human body in the sensory or motor cortex. Also, any, top, any topographical representation of the body via by a neural area. And so I'll be talking a little bit more about this. Most of you have probably seen or heard of this before. Topographical organization, this is neural spatial representation of the body or areas of the sensory world perceived by a sensory organ. The parts of the motor cortex that control the hands, fingers, lips, and tongues are disproportionately larger than the parts of the motor cortex that control other areas. So one of the primary ways that the motor cortex is organized is through this topographical representation. And in the motor cortex and in the sensory cortex, this topographical, this topographical representation is known as a homunculus. So here's an example. The motor homunculus maps the association of the cortex with body parts. Because of the fine motor skills found in hands, lips, and face, they are represented as being larger on the homunculus. A part of the body with lower motor ability is represented to be smaller. So here is the homunculus, and so this here is the motor cortex, and so this motor cortex then is going to send the instructions to move all the parts of our body. Well here, if we look at it, we see that over half of this motor cortex is just our feet and toes, and here is going to be our lips, and here's our tongue, and then probably over here is going to be our hands. So they have a much, much larger representation than would actually ref reflect the physical size of them on our body. So if we were to translate the homunculus in our motor cortex to an actual representation of a physical person, so these distortions illustrate the fact that the extensive areas of the motor cortex allow precise regulation of the hands, fingers, lips, and tongues. So here, these hands are just disproportionately large to reflect how large they actually are in our motor cortex. And the same thing goes here for the lips and tongues. This is, these are one of our primary incoming sensory information, whereas the rest of the body is comparatively smaller, reflecting the fact that it has less representation in the motor cortex. So now, We've talked about this movement organization within the motor cortex, and now we're going to be moving down to how the motor cortex is organized, or motor information is organized as it exits the brain. So when motor information leaves the body, then it travels down the spinal cord via one of two cortical spinal tracts. So cortical spinal tracts are the main efferent pathways from the motor cortex to the brainstem to the spinal cord. And remember, efferent is exit. So the main pathways, the exit pathways from the motor cortex to the rest of the body. So first we have the lateral cortical spinal tract. This branches at the brainstem level, crossing over to the opposite side of the brain and spinal cord. So the lateral cortical spinal tract moves the digits and limbs off the, on the opposite side of the body, because remember, our brain is organized contralaterally. The ventral cortical spinal tract remains on the same side of the brain and the spinal cord. It moves the muscles of the midline body, the trunk, on the same side of the body. So our arms are controlled by opposite, but then our actual trunk muscles, then in terms of bending, um, at our midpoint, our leaning over to the side, this is controlled by muscles on the same side of the body. And here you can see these two cortical spinal tracts. So, so we have the neurons that start here in the motor cortex and their axons extend down. And here then they split off. Okay, so we have the lateral cortical spinal tract and we have the ventral cortical spinal tract. And this ventral is called ventral because it's on the, the ventral, the underside of the spine. And this here lateral, it's more, more, again, lateral is on the outside. So 
the ventral cortical spinal tract moves the muscles at the body's midline and the lateral cortical spinal tract it will cross over to the other side and it moves limbs and digits on the body's right side so this is the left hemisphere and so this moves um, the arms on the right and you're going to have a motor cortex on the left side that's going to have a similar organization and a sort of similar uh, split and it's going to uh, control the limbs and digits on the right side of the body. Cortical spinal tracts originate in the neocortex and terminate in the spinal cord. Within the spinal cord, the cortical spinal fibers make synaptic connections with both interneurons and motor neurons. Motor neurons carry all nervous system commands out to the muscles. So here you start to see some of the higher order organization. So we have neurons in the motor cortex whose axons travel all the way down into the spinal cord and there they end and they make connections with other neurons. With these other neurons are known as interneurons and motor neurons and they're going to continue to pass this motor information on to the muscles. And that passing of information onto the muscles, that's what we'll be learning about in this next video.